everything old is new again. America's entertainment pop culture talk show. It may well possess a rudimentary intelligence. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. I felt a great disturbance in the force. Hello, I'm Mr. Ray. Come on, Mark, I got a job for me. Where's the goodies? Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. I'll bet you wouldn't have done anything like this if Mom and Dad were here. You filthy criminal. Excuse me while I whip this out. Go ahead. Make my day. Here are your hosts, Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. What is your name? Ben. The world you live in is Rome. Their laws, their power. I won't let Masala go unpunished for what he's done to us. There is a way. In the arena, there is no law. Racing is a blood sport. If you lose, you die. Welcome to Everything Old is New Again. This is Douglas Viviani with the movie connoisseur himself, David Cohen. Connoisseur, huh? Yeah, you like that? No, it's yeah. a bit of an overreach, but all right, sure. Such as your overreach about a half a year ago when you said Ben Hur with this um, uh, this particular actor. Uh, what was his name? I forget the guy. It was going to be uh, was going to be good. Remember you said that? Well, I was. I thought it would. I couldn't be bad because of his acting abilities. That's, Houston that's what is the last name. I forget that. Jack Houston. Jack Houston. Yeah, and it was. And it was bad. <laughs> I didn't see it. I just read it. I didn't even bother to see it because the reviews were so bad. Well, you know that's the whole thing. This year alone, we've seen. This year alone, we've seen tons of remakes, such as Blair Witch, Ghostbusters, Magnificent Seven. Tarzan and Ben Hur. Some were kind of successful, but most were like complete disasters. Critical, critical disasters. You mean uh, not financial? Yeah, financial, mostly disasters too. Well, well, now let's be clear: we're not talking about sequels. We're talking about remakes of movies that have already existed in the past. That's what today's show is. Correct. So I just want to be clear about that before we, okay. you know, because that could be confusing. Right. Um, so it's you know, it's easier to just remake a movie. I know that, but the you know you've already got the existing script or outline, um, and you've got a built-in audience. But is it smart to do? Let's just look at the movies. You talk about the money. Let's look at look at the money of those movies I mentioned just for a moment. Blair Witch made forty four million dollars. Had a five. That's Blair Witch two. Well, now I guess it's Blair Witch, not two. Yeah, it was sort of like a reboot or reboot. whatever. Reboot forty four million with a five million dollar budget. So that worked. It's pretty good. That was not bad. Ghostbusters had a hundred forty four million dollar budget. Only made two hundred twenty nine. Only when you add in advertising, they usually say advertising that used to be half of the budget amount. For worldwide advertising. If that's the case, that one lost money. At hmm. least broke even, right? Magnificent Seven made a little bit of money. It was a $90 million budget, $160 million they made. Hmm. But it wasn't like, I mean, in today's world, right. that's Didn't worldwide. Knock it out We're not park. talking about right. huge bucks. Tarzan made a couple of dollars, 357 again, worldwide, $180 million budget. So, again, it's not a huge disaster, but it wasn't out of this, you know, it wasn't. This huge blockbuster. And again, I'm talking about worldwide, which is huge numbers worldwide, uh, you know, huge numbers of possible people, obviously, than just America. So these these movies, I uh, kind of didn't, eh, they didn't make a splash. No one's talking about them. Let's put it that way. When Ben Hur came out, it won 11 Academy Awards. The original. This thing, yeah, yeah this thing was a, it actually, that was a remake too, because they did it a, a silent movie. Silent movie, right. But that was a instant classic, if you ask me. Um, so, I don't know. I think in this one, I saw it. They changed the focus to the chariot race. And the chariot race was the only thing that was going to save the world and save his world. And he had to kill his stepbrother, if you want to call that, Marsalis. He had to kill him to gain revenge for his family. That's not what the original Ben-Hur was about. There was much more to it than that, and he didn't intend to kill anybody when he was in the chariot race. He wanted to win the chariot race, so he gained credibility back again in the Roman society that he was shot. So you're by. saying it's not Jack Houston's fault, the acting, the actors. It was the way the movie was rewritten. I would say that, yes. The focus was wrong. Yes, the focus was wrong, a more modern focus on the individual and, and on revenge as opposed to a much larger social picture that that movie was trying to present. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that they're going to focus more on the action and not so much on the story. It's pretty stupid, but they figure, they figure that's where they're going to make the money, right? It's an action movie, quote unquote. I agree 100%. And, and away from anything spiritual whatsoever, all into the secular, and that's, again, not what this movie was about, and uh, there's more to life than revenge. Let's just hear a smidge of of the presentation of Charlton Heston, just to remember or refresh your memory if you haven't seen it or 
introduce you to it if you haven't seen it, the original Ben-Hur. You may conquer the land. You may slaughter the people. That is not the end. We will rise again. The day Rome falls, there will be a shout of freedom such as the world has never heard before. I don't believe in miracles. No, life is a miracle. Now, Charlton Heston underrated or not? Underrated? Do you think he was underrated? No. You think he was revered when he was alive for, for his acting chops or no? I think he was revered as a movie star. Yeah, there you go. That's a good point. Yeah. He was definitely a movie star. Right. I think may have been underrated for his ability to act or at least he mm. almost is in the, in the am I wrong to say that he's in the uh, or Shatner is in the Charlton Heston vein of overacting. There are some scenes yeah. of Heston over the top. I, I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked so well. But he was Charlton he Heston, did. right? He was just he was bigger than life. He was. I mean, amazing, amazing actor. If you haven't seen any of his movies, you're not going to be disappointed with any of them. He even did some some spaghetti westerns that were over the top good. But that's the movie you're going to remake? 11 Academy Awards. It was a three-and-a-half-hour movie with an intermission. It was a spectacle. It was a phenomenon <laughs> of the day. It really was. It was over the top. That's, that's the movie that you want to remake. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I don't I don't uh, I don't buy it at all. I would like you just to just to tune in to a little bit of a presentation from young David Cohen to present to us a list of failed remakes and these are recent movies from say Fail- 1990 on. But failed but we're talking more failed in terms of uh quality of the movie is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. So, give All right, a so shot. I want to I'm curious to see what there is. Okay, here we go. Tarzan, War Games, Poltergeist, Ben-Hur, Bewitched, Annie, Karate Kid, Planet of the Apes. Well, that was pretty good. No, it was about the one for, with uh, with Marky Oh, the Mark. first rem- yes. remake. Okay, got it. RoboCop, Halloween, Arthur. I'm getting sick just reading this because I remember it. these movies. Bad News Bears, Little Rascals, Total Recall, The Honeymooners, Psycho. Why? Poseidon Adventure, um, the remake called Poseidon. Yep. Day the Earth Stood Still, Total Recall, that was remade, right, that was bad. Fright Night, Frankenstein, Hercules, Dracula, The Wolfman, they, yeah, they're being remade every year. Blues Brothers, ugh, The Invasion, which was a remake of The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Footloose, Fame, The Manchurian Candidate, Real, I didn't even know that was remade. The Longest Yard, The War of the Worlds, The Omen, The Omen was remade? Yep. Ah, The Fantastic Four, yeah, we, how many times is that going to be remade? Stepford Wives, ugh. Walking Tall, The Day the Earth Stood Still, The Thing, Guess Who, which is Guess Who's Coming to Dinner remake. They re- they remade that. Yes. Uh, the Time Machine, Rollerball, Night on Elmer- Nightmare on Elmer Street, uh, The Pink Panther. That was a while ago, but yeah, th- those are. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, those, it's horrendous. If you were to read that list of movies you would recommend to someone to see and not say that I'm talking about the most recent one, but the original, that list would take an entirely different take. Right. You would say, wow, that's a great list. I want to see almost all of those movies that's if true. I haven't seen them. That's true. And right. now when you hear the list in the vein of these were remade, you you say that because they're so unforgettable. They were horrible. And well, because... First of all, the, the the horror of the fact that they would remake some of them to begin with, but also just knowing when you think about the remakes and how bad the remakes were makes you kind of gag. Yes, exactly. Let's play this real quick. Can we slip this, slip this in there? Let's just hear a little bit. Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. It's a man house! A man house! Really did it. You maniac! You blew it up! Oh, damn! We'll be back right after this. <laughs> You're listening to Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. 100,000 years ago, it found its way into our galaxy, trapped in the frozen wasteland of Antarctica. Now the men of Station 4 have made a monumental discovery, an alien creature had frozen, but not to death. And man is the warmest place. Oh, man.
man's the warmest place to hide. What's going on here with the clips? I know, just there's not, something going on with this new program we're using. i gotta, I got to look into it. So it's it. just the last two or three words get cut off. Yeah, it's bizarre. Um, we'll have to look into that. Uh, can I tell you, we're on Everything Old is New again. We're doing the best we can. We're talking about remakes of old movies, usually classics, and seeing and questioning whether it should be done or not. Now, in this in instance, the movie was called The Thing in the 50s, 1951. If you ever watched Gunsmoke, have you seen this in the old reruns? You got James Arness is the is uh, Matt Dillon, I guess is his name, right? Isn't that the character? I believe so, yes. Yeah, and he's the, the big sheriff. He's a cool cat and right. he's running around, you know, saving the day. Well, back in 51, he did a movie before Gunsmoke, he did a movie, or, yeah, before Gunsmoke, he did a movie called The Thing, and he was The Thing, running around and uh, almost like a Frankenstein-ish kind of character, killing these guys up in the Antarctic. John Carpenter, remember this director? He did Halloween. Mm -hmm. Back went in the ahead, 80s. Yep, and he went ahead and redid The Thing in 82 with Kurt Russell. To me, that was a great remake done well done. No? Oh, yes. I don't remember it. Oh, man. I'll take was... your word for it. And I really, I don't even know if I've seen it. it oh, was... you got to see it. But it was 35 years ago. I don't, if I did, I don't remember. It was it. tremendous. And then they've redone it again. It was absolutely horrible. Recently, they've redone it. It's on that list. So there's a unique one where hmm. the original could have, like, it's an original movie from the 50s with the special effects helped it, you know, as it developed over time in the 80s when this was done in 82, and the thing, you know, turns and metamorphoses into other people and so forth. I, I thought that, uh, I, could, I couldn't believe they were redoing Spider-Man so quickly after the first yes. series with, with, what's his name? Uh, and, Toby uh, Maguire. Toby Maguire, but I was pleasantly surprised. I don't know if you had seen it when it came out, um, but it was really well done. Because they changed a lot of it. There was the origin story. The second one was the origin story with Gwen, Gwen Stacy, right? You remember, yeah. Uh, and it was the original origin story from the comics. The first one with Tommy McGuire, which was great, uh, really advanced. They did like ten years of of the story. They had the different girlfriend and so forth. They skipped over the original story about that and how she passed away and all this. So um, there was room to really dive in and, and get the Into real the back story. story. Yeah, and yeah. both actors, I think, did a great job. Yeah, I just thought both of them were great. I agree with but you. But wasn't it crazy to think they were doing it so yeah, it made no soon sense. after? Made the, no sense. The huge uh, success of the first one. Especially yeah. since the comic's been around since, you know, the mid-60s. There's so many stories that you can develop. We're going to do the same origin story? What? Why? Right. But that was sort of an anomaly because yes. that, that actually worked. And they, they now have a third... Um, you it, you saw Civil series. War, the new Spider-Man character, the is, actor... Is going to be in... Another sequel. Right. Because um, the original... What was that fellow's name? Garfield. Yeah. Uh, kind of upset the producers of his franchise and he was doing a great job with it and the producer got so upset he was at an event he wouldn't come down from the hotel room to see the financiers of the movie Ooh. for whatever reason i don't know if he's right or wrong about it but it upset the financiers so much that they said fire this guy we'll get somebody else Ooh. yeah ouch be crazy um then it was batman begins remember that i mean oh, batman sure. was, existed before but not really in a real movie it was a tv movie remember the tv show it's a movie so there really wasn't so tim burton in 89 made a big statement with batman yeah and then in 2000 and that was michael keaton right, right. 2005 christian bale came along and they rebooted that franchise again i think they did a great job both I don't think really 89 Batman, the original story, kind of holds up. I don't know. The Tim Burton, do you still watch that anymore? Yeah. Kind of dark. Kind of. In kinda. the day, it's it was just, great. But yeah, yeah. But it lost now, its charm, I think. But the new the new series, that, those three were great with Christian uh, Bale. You know, no, I'm you not, didn't like I'm it. not that big a fan. I hate to say it. All right, so not we're not universal on that one. Interesting. Yeah. Right, let's try this one. I think this was a was a great remake of an old classic. Fly. Got into the transmitter pod with me that first time when I was alone. Oh, I'm afraid. Don't be afraid. No. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I don't know about you, but I I was so eerie. What a, I really thought that was a great, uh, scary, horrifying love story. No? With Jeff Goldblum? Yes. Yes. I really yes. enjoy that. And that is a remake of the original with David Hennessy right. we spoke now about. Now, that's been past. 30 years, so you think yes. they're going to do it again? 
Oh, no, I'm saying that I... The, now I'm just talking about kind no, of the I'm, ones but, I like. No, but I'm oh, saying, do you think, you know... I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. Because um, you thought the one in 86 was that really good. Really good, really good. I, the, the, the sequel to that with Stoltz, what the fellow's name? Oh, yeah, uh, Eric was, Stoltz. Eric, so it was okay. It wasn't terrible. I think it's enough with, with that already. I don't know. Fly should just, just be put to rest, right? Exactly. And once you kill a fly with a fly swatter, it doesn't come back to life, does it? How about Seems Scarface to. with Al Pacino? Me, I want what's coming to me. Oh, well, what's coming to you, Tony? The world should come. And everything in it. Say hello to my little friend! There he is, huh? Now that was a great sequel, no? And that sequel, am I saying? Great remake of a movie. Did you know that that was an original movie, Scarface? Uh, uh, yes, I did, but I don't. that doesn't count. Why not? The original movie was like it was almost a silent movie. How long no, ago was it? Was it was G. Robinson. It was forties. Uh, Mid forties. Yeah, yeah. it's forty years later. I, yeah. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. The original. Let me be clear about this. You're right. It was 1932. Let me that, was, be clear. that was yeah. So that's that eight, was very fifty years very later. Different kind of movie. Yes, but still, it was the same person. Yeah. You know, the same person. I never thought uh, the second was was good either. You didn't sorry. like the Scarface. Yeah. Uh, yes. A lot of blood and guts. A lot of violence. Over the top. Yeah. All right. Well, a lot of people like. How about it, something though. more current? I see you have one. Uh, another one that was. That was successful that came out fairly recently. Uh, fairly but, recently. Okay, but play your clip. Try the clip. What's your connection with this fellow? I was his lawyer. Every way you turn, I guess we're going to run into each other. <laughs> Dad, you should have just punched him out. Yeah. Come out. Come out wherever you are. Every good man's got to wrestle with the devil. Watch you the hell off my property. It would be unethical of me to advise a citizen to take the law into his own hands. Cape Fear, originally in 62 with uh, Gregory Peck and uh, Robert Mitchum, who both made appearances in the reboot or the remake in, in 91 with Robert De Niro. Uh, I think it was done great, but now there's two others don't have clips for that I think you want to talk about, which does make sense. True Grit, remember, with Jeff Bridges? Sure. Redid the, I mean, yeah. it's hard to do it. John it Wayne. Hard. Redid John Wayne. Right. And right. What'd you think That's of it? That's very risky. What'd you think I of I liked one? it. I liked it. I thought it was successful. I thought that, you know, they, they did a really good job. Because he didn't try to be John Wayne. No. You know, he right. played it totally, right. he's a good actor, he played it totally different. Right. And right. so it, it did, I think it worked. And they took it seriously, which they should. Uh, and then, I think one that you really are hot, hot and heavy on is this Mad Max. Oh, yeah. What a with, great uh, movie. From just this last year. Yeah. With you like, do, theory, do you think that that's better than the Mel Gibson franchise? Uh, I do. I do. Because it's to me, it's just a more interesting story. They, they've just ma they made the story more interesting. I think the original Mad Max was very was unique in that, you know, the, just the overall theme of what they were doing was was kind of weird and out there. Um, and Mel Gibson was fine in it, and it was a very cultish kind of film. But this one, to me, the remake, um, I just understood what was going on more, and it made more sense. I think the story was a little more um, full, fuller. And they had more characters, and there were more women, which was always nice to see. Not just, you know, you know what I mean. I mean it's just, yes. just the diversity was great. Yes. Yeah. All right, I, I can uh, jump on board with that. I, I, I would also tend to say that sometimes the original movie doesn't have time to explore the backstories as much as they want to. And once you've already gotten the story out there... That's an interesting point. Yeah. They're taking more of a chance to go into the backstory. Oh, true. It's more fun. Yeah. We'll be back. Just never, ever, side. ever redo Casablanca, please. <laughs> Everything old is new again. The fundamental things now, back to America's Entertainment Pop Culture Talk Show. Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Inside of us, we both know you belong with Victor. You're part of his work, the thing that keeps him going. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not with him, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? We'll always have Paris. We didn't have, we, we lost it until you came to Casablanca. We got it back last night. And I said I would never leave you. And you never will. But I've got a job to do, too. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be... 
can't be any part of, oh, it's cutting out again. But anyway, that is uh, uh, Humphrey Bogart in the most famous speech, maybe uh, one of the most famous speeches in movie history. Uh, from Casablanca, this is Douglas Viviani, one of the most famous counterparts to David Cohen uh, <laughs> in history. And I wanted to play that because we're talking about films and remakes. And in this section, I would say remakes of movies that should never ever happen. <laughs> Am I wrong? Yeah. I mean, do you, what do you, you I don't, not. you know, there's been a lot of movies ever made and to say that was the best movie ever made is a, is a statement. It's one of the best movies ever made for yeah, sure. I, I agree with that. Um, it depends on what genre you like, science right. fiction versus romance and all that stuff. But the lines from that movie, the acting, the tears at the end of, you know, if you feel going, going like going there, the action, if you feel like going there, the political intrigue and I mean, I, I, I guess I, even the last line of the movie. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's Louis, like, I think this is the start of a beautiful friendship. Exactly, and I just I don't know. It's just me. I I think that that is a, something to be admired, uh, especially the acting and all the people, and and of course Bogey. To me, is beyond reproach. Uh, I think he's uh, underrated now because it's been so long since he's been on the screen. But uh, well, because he's dead, <laughs> it's been a while. But I mean, the stuff that he pr produced was was just yeah. I don't know, so cool. Yeah, is the best word for it. It's cool yeah. before cool was cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, I totally agree. All right, totally agree. Along those lines, I am now going to give you and anyone listening a quiz. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then seven again. So 14 movies that I am suggesting should never, ever, ever be remade. And if Hollywood, you don't listen to this, it's at your own peril. So these movies were never remade. Correct. And you're saying they don't should never ever be remade. ever do it, okay. please. So grab a pen and a piece of paper. And try to write down, because you'll hear clips in a row now, of seven movies. Now, if you're a movie fan, it probably won't be hard to do. But um, there might be one or two that's a little difficult. But I think for the most part, you're going to get them. Because it's hard, because these are all going to be classic, of course, movies that should not be remade. Let's see. I'm going to put the pressure on, uh, <laughs> on you now to make sure you get them all right. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Of all the gin joints in all the towns in all the world... She walks into mine. Where shall I go? What shall I do? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. How I would argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Frostbutt. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Past millions of people. I never knew it would come to that. You must believe it. Hey, Yara, it came to that the first time you sentenced a man to death. You knew to be innocent. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me that it's 825? Precisely. Damn, I'm late for school. There we go. Okay. You, should, you know, there might be one or two that's a little difficult, and they're all dated. They're all older movies, but I think uh, I think we get a get a kick out of this. Let's try the the first one was easy. That was Casablanca. Right. Casablanca. Second one, I don't give it. Was frankly, Scar Scarlet. frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a damn. Uh, it's like, oh no, <laughs> the name, the title of the movie. It's a Civil War movie. Yeah, it's, it sure is. <laughs> it's 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 uh, gone with from a your W. Memory? W Gone with the Wind. There you go. Do you agree with me about Casablanca? I think. Now, what about Gone with the Wind, do you agree that that should not be remade? That, and that, again, I don't yeah. love that movie, but it, it, come no, on. No, there's no reason to remake it. Come on. No. What was the next one? 2001 Space Odyssey. Uh, Dave, I, I think there's no purpose for this conversation. Right. Th that is pretty much what you say to me at the end of, uh, at the, end of the show. <laughs> uh, you agree that shouldn't be remade? Isn't no. It? Come on. No reason. Citizen Kane. Citizen oh, well, Kane should not be that's remade. That's perfection in moviedom. I mean, right. that challenges for the best that's of all time. That's probably why it was never remade. I hope not. Uh, what's to the next kill, one? To Kill a Mockingbird. You know, that was, I mean, underrated, don't you think? I mean, people don't really talk about I don't know it. I it was underrated. Okay. I think it was rated pretty No, I'm highly. talking about now. Is it like, you know, is this, when you say our greatest movies of all time, I don't think people mention To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, maybe, well, maybe not. They do. I don't know. That's a good question. You know, time goes, but you kind of I, forget there's, things. There's no need to remake no. it because you just have to watch that one. It's perfection. So, right. This one, you may have a tough time. 12 we had Angry Stanley, Men? We had Stanley Kramer's wife on the show, and it was Stanley Kramer movie. 
not 12 Angry Men. No, nope. Judgment at Nuremberg. Judgment at Nuremberg. I mean, that, show, that movie should be shown in every high school class. You know, the only reason I would say that that should be remade is because of the importance of the movie. So I don't know if kids are going to watch... You know, I, true, but how do you do, how do you do better than Spencer Tracy and that whole list of actors, including William Shatner, uh, the least of which I will say uh, in that. But you you had yeah. an unbelievable cast. What's his name? The the, the, the uh, Gregory Peck and no, yeah, I know, but that, Maximilian Schnell. Maximilian Schell. Yes, that, I mean, oh, oh the, wow, it was unreal. Yeah, Judy yeah. Garland. I mean, you know, you go on and on. It was it's cast of thousands. Beyond good and disturbing as it should be. Right. And what a tremendous lesson it teaches. All right, let's go. And beyond that, after that? Back to the future. Exactly. All right, let's try. We're running out of time. Let's try. Do you agree with all those? Should I not agree be with all. Should not be remade. Uh, put a little asterisk next to judgment because right, of the importance you, of it. But yes. Understood. Okay. All right. But I don't think you, I, I think you may ruin it. I don't know. You know, you'd have to have a ton of money to get the quality actors that you need to redo that and director but you know it seems like one that spielberg kind of could do you know yeah true uh but all right let's let's try uh let's try the next quiz ten thousand dollars for me by myself for that you get the head the tail the whole damn thing not the man i knew 10 years ago it's not the years it's the mileage down here it's our time it's our time down here that's all Coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it! You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Good idea, Ernie. A toast <laughs> to my big brother George, the richest man in town. Someday, and that day may never come. I'll call upon you to do a service for me. But uh, until that day, accept this justice as a gift on my daughter's wedding day. All right, there you go. Now you may not agree with me and I don't think I could say that all of those are classic movies but for certain reasons I don't think they should be remade right uh, all right so the first one's got to be easy Jaws all right second one you may have struggled no, a little I bit I couldn't I couldn't figure that one Raiders out. of the Lost Ark Raiders. I took an obscure quote to try to get it get hard okay so I mean do you think Raiders could be done better I didn't mean, is there any reason to no can't you know, think of one it's just doesn't mean there won't be but I can't think of a reason right, to do it right right uh, next one, you didn't get this uh, was, one. Well, I heard ET, but I don't Before know. Before ET was, was no, I didn't get this. Goonies. Ah, uh, now only because it's hard to catch your. And I never saw kids. it, so I. Yeah, oh, all right. Uh, yeah. It's the the way the kids acted and and and, <laughs> and represented every man in in every kingdom in society, so to speak. There is that one. Uh, why I say that? Then of course ET. What about the next right. one after that? Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead. That's yes. what I meant to write down. Next one. Um, uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yes, and Godfather. There you go, Godfather. Another one that could be one of the best movies ever made. Yes. Uh, so in that in that vein, I'm not always saying it's got to be classic. There is some that there's no need to remake it, even though it right. may not be the greatest movie in the planet. But most of those, I would suggest. I mean, Jaws was them. remade several times. With, well, sequels, not. Uh, yeah, but I know. Uh. And I'm talking about redoing the original like story. Like a reboot. Right. No, no okay. reason No reason to do it. Godfather, come on, you're not touching that. No. Right? All right, we'll be I back. Hope not. On everything. I really hope it's not. True. We're back on everything old. Let's do it again to continue and finish off films that should not be made. What one should be? Everything old is new again. Dot biz. If you haven't heard a show, tune us in. This is Everything Old is New Again, America's entertainment pop culture talk show with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Vampires alive among the lifeless that make the night hideous with their inhuman cravings. A world of inanimate zombies by day, irresistible, horrifying attackers by night. Welcome back to Everything Old is New Again. That sounds like uh, uh, my New Year's Eve. Uh, <laughs> we've got um, a discussion here of films that maybe uh, sh should be remade now that, that have not yet been remade. That's one. If you remember our discussion, we, we go a little ways back. Uh, you could look it up on the podcast, Everything Old is New Again.biz. 
uh, everything old is new again. Biz. Take a look. You'll see we talk about The Last Man on Earth, 1964. Vincent Price and Richard Matheson uh, wrote that movie and wrote the original uh, book that it was based upon. It was remade later with, uh, with Charlton Heston and Omega Man. Later after that, it was remade into I Am Legend with um, Will, uh, Will uh, what's his name? Will Smith. Uh, but the thing is, I don't think the... The remakes, which were good, got it. The original thing with that movie was that the killer of the movies, the, the, the human being who killed all these zombies, was the villain. Because the new society, like it or not, were the zombies. And he was their nightmare of killing the zombies during the day when they couldn't come out, if that made sense. Yes. So, But that whole that take on the whole thing has been lost. Even down to Night of the Living Dead, down to Walking Dead, that whole thing has right. now been lost. Who's the villain? Society, ch- it's like the apocalypse now, in, in yeah. a way. Society yeah. changed. What is more insane? The person that tries to change what is society now, or the society itself that may be you know, just zombies. That's insane unto itself to us, but to them it's not. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. So yeah. that's kind of cool, but you, it, so that kind of could be redone with that take on it. That's just my point of view. Do you have any others that you think uh, should be redone uh, that have not been? Well, there's a recent one that came out because I enjoyed the book so much and the movie was such a disappointment. Do you ever read the book or see the movie Goodbye Girl? It was uh, Ben Affleck uh, was in it and it came out, I think. Not the, in, you talk about the original Goodbye Girl with uh, not Neil no, Simon? No, Gone, Gone Girl. Sorry, oh. Gone Girl. Not, I'm thinking, <laughs> thinking of the 80s. Gone Girl. No. Uh, awesome book. Could have been a great, great Great movie, and they just, it was awful, oh, awful. Another Should ben, be redone. Another Ben Affleck situation. Yeah, Sorry. sadly. Sorry. Right. Uh, I have one that I think is pretty cool that could be redone. To me, Matt Helm, if you haven't heard of this, it's uh, back in the 60s. Dean Martin was Matt Helm. He took it tongue-in-cheek. He was a James Bondish type of character. And I think that if you go back to the books, it's more or less like a Jason Bourne type of character. He was supposed to be serious kind of an agent and not a parody of the spy genre but he had certain things certain charms that uh, didn't or hasn't been seen if you read the books in the movies now although they're trying to the new James Bond is if you look at it is Matt Helm-esque very realistic not all this James Bond gadgetry and all that just a real down-to-earth spy that's got problems he's got a drinking problem he's not he's really uh, having difficulties doing this job he's got no uh, support and you know how does he do this job without all these uh these technological advantages if that makes sense yeah that's yeah, just me that I don't know that's uh, right. kind of a good one what do you have any in mind that you might Think of um no do another one because I'm right. I'm close to one my but All right. but go ahead League of Extraordinary Gentlemen huh that's uh, a good one. was done yeah. we've talked about that we had a show on Vic- the Victorian Avengers right. if you look back and want to listen to that uh, and we spoke about different teams that was kind of an all star team of Victorian era superheroes I just think it was it's a great idea in the comics wasn't fleshed out beautifully or perfectly in the comics and certainly wasn't fleshed out well in the uh, in the film arena but I think now with the advances of what we've done and what they've done with the upcoming League of uh, Justice League as well as all the Avenger movies, they've learned, I think, how to make this kind of team superhero movie work. And with these characters, I think it would be very unique to see uh, Captain Nemo and uh, and Island Quartermain and so forth together uh, solving a mystery and fighting evil. What do you think? I agree. So close? I, no, no, I, I, I strongly agree with that. I like okay. that. All right. You got any um, others? You know, I'm trying to think of movies where... Older movies that had really good premises, but but the um, well, the special effects weren't there yet because it was just too early on to take full advantage of it. You can't uh, think of one? I got one in mind right go now. Go ahead, go. Yeah. We did a show on uh, Star Wars, but we inferred it came from... Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon. And they redid the Flash Gordon, and yep. it was a spoof. It wasn't. It, it's a fun kind of campy movie, but if you go back to the original, it's a serious serial. Yeah. Look at that, and if you want to remake that, that could be like a Westworld. Take a look at that and redo the serial yeah. of Flash Gordon with the new technology. I think, that I think would it work could be really fun. Well. Yeah. Because it's a great story. You know, yes, this it underdog is. football player, he's indoctrinated into having to save the world because he's thrown into space and whatever. It's a. Uh, I don't know. That's to me. That would be a kind of a good one. Yeah, I agree. Any others in mind or no? 
Um, I've got one, the superstar of all superstars, and one that no, has you've, got to be made. You've been, you've been doing well. Go ahead. Give me another all one. All right. This has got to be remade. It's called Fantastic Voyage from the 60s. Now, a film called Fantastic Voyage has broken through in an unexpected direction to create an adventure of astonishing suspense and beauty. Four men and a beautiful girl off on a fantastic voyage, actually entering inside the human body. Ah, so there we go. I'm, I'm so enthralled. I wanted to hear more. Um, <laughs> again, because of the technology and the sort of um, cool adventure it would be, and maybe even educational for that matter, um, what that was was they shrunk down into a submarine or in a submarine along with a submarine these four characters um, and put them into a I think it was the president of the United States or some important person's body had an incurable disease or incurable problem that they could not cure unless they sent in intelligent antibodies, if you will, into the person's body. Hmm. So they went in and tried to cure him of his problem, and danger ensued because the body itself was attacking them. And then you, you learn about different parts of the body when you're going through the bloodstream and all of this and how they're going to get to where this problem is originated, as well as the interaction with the people and then the problem of how we get out. And by the way, if we miss our, they were supposed to get out through a certain way and they couldn't get out that way, they had to figure out how am I getting out of the body before we blow up? We only have a certain period of time and then we're going to be life size again. And if we do that, it's going to be like alien, you know, we're going to come out of this guy's stomach so uh, and kill him. So I don't know. I think it's got so much possibility. You tell me. Yeah, I, I agree with that too. I think you're you're spot on here. I think I thought about it. Uh, all right, let me just, we have a short on time, unfortunately. I'm going to show you and tell you about what's upcoming and uh, well, let's see if we like or don't like what's Give happening. Give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. Yeah, yeah. chips are going to remake. Why? Uh, Flatliners are remaking. Uh, uh. Jumanji, I think, could have potential. Uh. I don't think that was done well. It's, it's about the me. toys? Yeah. No. Yeah, the, the game, okay. the card, the, the board game. I don't think it was done well. Nah. Uh, the Mummy with Tom Cruise oh, this time. Really? Uh, uh, Friday the 13th. Oh, Why? please, come on. Murder on the Orient Express. Could, Could be. be done well. I don't like the mystery. I think it's a silly ending, but that has nothing to do with the movie. I think it was written poorly. But there's a whole generation it's of people that out. don't know the end. Yes, so but that's... it's a total cop-out. Yeah. Uh, that's just me, but yeah, I think that's, that's right. Well, that's I'd, I'd much rather see the other one she wrote, not Murder on the Orient Express, but... Um... Uh, the the twelve the Indians the twelve something where they all start dying one yes, by one. Yes, I don't. I know the. Uh, I don't, you know what I mean. We don't okay. Okay. you're okay. right. Uh, Six billion dollar man. Then in 2018, Robin Hood they're redoing. King uh, Arthur. What's King Arthur? Well, just, Knights of the Round Knight, Table. You know, do all that stuff. With, like Camelot. Is that yes, what it is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the, all right, maybe. You know, maybe the Predator. That's never been done right. No, it hasn't. But it's done, it's done it a hasn't. million times. Uh, the, maybe the story's just not there, you know. Uh, the, the Predator. Pre the Predator, really? Yep. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, a long story one, and a star is born with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I spent 30 years trying to prove This is the, the only truth. one to watch. Ah, the Skull Island's on the way back. So will we be on? Everything old is new again. Join us next week. Have some fun. Bye, that man. I don't know. What do I know? It, it just looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully. Hopefully we'll get a good few good remakes yes. coming up. I've got some great ideas. I hope uh, Hollywood's listening and give me a call. We'll uh, work out a deal. Everything old is new again. Come on back. We'll have some fun on the radio.